Thanks a lot for joining this session. Welcome to this talk about Selenium Manager. I want to start with a very basic question. What is Selenium, right? Well, the answer to this question can be simple as well. Selenium is a mineral, right? That's what it is, Selenium. But seriously, what is Selenium for us, for software developer? Well, I have to say this is not a rhetorical question. I actually want to know what the people attending to Selenium Conf think about what is Selenium. And for that, I created a little experiment. So please, uh, let's scan this code with your, with your mobile if you want to participate. And it's basically to, to provide your answer to this question. What is Selenium for you in very simple words? Let's see what the people attending to this conference think of well, what is Selenium, this simple question, right? So, people, it's voting, right? 40 people, now three answers. That's a tool I use in, in my lectures at the university because I'm, I'm, I work as a professor. I think it's, well, make things interactive and it's interesting in this case to discover what you think about what is Selenium, right? That's a question that also uh, Diego in the, in, the, in the keynote this morning also asked. So I'm quite interested in what you think about that. In fact, we can take a look already to the results as a word cloud. A library, right, that appear very much automation, testing, browser automation, Selenium is my bread, right? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Web tool, seeds, Selenium, Mercury. Okay, so there is something that tool, library, automation that mm, appear a lot. Frankly, it's, it's not there. It's good for you because I suppose you attend to, to Diego's talk. And yeah, that's a, good, that's a good, uh, good, good, good sign. While people stick participating, we can see the result at the end of the, of the talk if you want. Let's continue with this. So, the answer to the, what is Selenium, we can uh, search the documentation and there you can find a very good definition of what is Selenium. Selenium is a suite of tools for automating web browsers. That's what it is. It has a suite of tools. It's not a single thing. It's different elements. So Selenium, we have Selenium with driver, which is a library for controlling browsers programmatically. So Selenium with driver is, in a, in a short word, a library, right? Then we have IDE. IDE is a web plugin. Currently, it's ported to an election application, but it's used to record and playback on the browser. So IDE is currently a plugin, right? It's a tool. Selenium Grid is a network infrastructure for providing remote web browsers, typically to Selenium web driver. So Grid is an infrastructure, right? All of this is Selenium. This suite of tool is what is Selenium, right? Selenium web driver, in my opinion, is the heart of Selenium. And sometimes we call it directly Selenium. So we can say, that Selenium is a broader automation library. That's what it is in a single word. But also I think it's in interesting to discover what is not Selenium, right? Because maybe sometimes we, we are wrong. I think that Selenium is not a testing framework. Framework it embodies a design and Selenium does not uh, that. Selenium offers capabilities for browser automation but it's not a framework itself. But it's not even a testing library, right? It can be used for testing, for sure, but it's a browser automation library which is not exactly the same. But most of the people that use Selenium use Selenium for testing. So how can you do testing with Selenium? For that, we need other elements, right? Of course, we need browsers. That's the first thing we need to, to have in order to use Selenium. We can have browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Edge, even others like Safari can be local, right, installed in my machine, in my Windows, in my MacOS, in my, in my Linux. Can be remote, served by grid, or even executed in a container, right, like in Docker container, in, in Docker Selenium, sorry. And can be in the cloud, right? There are vendors that provide these cloud uh, solutions, like source lab, lambda test, and browser stack, which provides uh, browser as a, as a service, let's say, and other services. So, next, in addition to the browser, we need a language, right? Because 
Selenium with driver provides a cross-browser API for controlling the uh, browsers. So first, we need to select which language we prefer because officially the Selenium project uh, comes in different uh, flavor in different languages, Java, JavaScript, Python, .NET, or Ruby. So we need to select the programming language we want to control uh, browsers with Selenium with driver. And typically for testing with Selenium, we are going to use a unit testing framework, a real framework, right? In order to create tests, these small programs we use to uh, evaluate, uh, assess a system under test. A test in the X unit family typically is composed by four stage setup to initialize the system under test. Then very important to exercise to actually do something with the system under test and get some outcome. And very important as well, uh, verify to create a set, one or more, what we call assertions, like right pre predicates, in which we comparate the expected uh, outcome from the real outcome from the, from the system under test. As a result, we have a verdict, right? Green or, uh, or red, pass or fail. Finally, uh, an option we can uh, finalize my synthesis under test in this four stage, the teardown. For that, we typically use actual unit testing framework like a unit for Java, uh, Minitest, Mocha for hard JavaScript, PyUnit, and you'd, and to name a, a few. So, let me show you an example of a real test. This kind, this is Java, okay? In which I'm using JUnit5, sorry, to implement a Selenium test. It has the four states I mentioned, the, the setup, the test, exercise, and verify, and the teardown, right? So this is a very basic Selenium test using Java, and I have to say this is not using the latest version of Selenium on purpose, right? This is not the latest version of, of Selenium. So if I try to run this, right, what is going to happen? Now it's building, right? It's a Maven project in this case. And of course, this test fails, right? Because the path of the driver executable would be set by someone, right? And that leads me to the next uh, slide, this one, which is the drivers, right? We also need something called driver. In addition to my test, and of course the browser, with something in the middle, which is the driver. To understand it, this, well, first we need to maybe to know a bit of the history of Selenium. Selenium, the first st uh, release of Selenium, Selenium 1, was based on JavaScript, right? And then WebDriver appeared. WebDriver was a project created by Simon Stewart, and they merged with the Selenium 1 um, created by Jason Huggins. Together, they built Selenium WebDriver or Selenium 2, and then Selenium 3 and 4. And this, this new tool, this new, new library, has something in the middle which is the driver, right? Basically, the driver is a binary file which talks the native support of each browser, right? That this is the, the, the approach of WebDriver, and this is what we have in Selenium 2, from t, uh, 3 and 4. So the details of that, it's not important for developers, but what is very important of, of, of this for developers is that we need something called driver. Beforehand, I can drive a browser with an anyway driver. For that, I need Chrome driver to, to drive Chrome. I need Gecko driver for Firefox, or I need Edge driver for Edge, right? The communication between the test and the driver is using the, this specification called also with driver, right? But as I said, from a developer perspective, the important thing is that someone needs to manage this driver and need to make available for the test. And that is something that I'm personally, as a researcher at the university, I have spent many time. And I came up with a conclusion that this process, I call it driver management, is composed by three stages, right? Download, setup, and maintenance about drivers. So let me explain this phase, download. This is maybe the most simple. You need to go to the page of the driver, select the proper driver for your, for your browser, imagine Chrome driver, a given version, a given uh, operating system, and download to your local machine. The same for Gecko driver or H driver, right? This is typically, or at the beginning, it was a manual process. Then the setup, the second step. Once we have the driver, we have to do something with them. We have to configure 
And for that, we have two alternatives. We can put these drivers in the path, right? This is the environment variable, uh, variable uh, an operating system used to locate binaries. Or alternative, in Java, or there is another alternative in JavaScript as well, we can export the absolute path of the driver using these properties, right? So this is the second step, setup. And third, maintenance. And this step is maybe the most problematic in my opinion. Because web browsers, uh, modern web browsers, are called evergreen. It means that each browser, like Chrome, Firefox of Edge, automatically and silently upgrades to the next stable version when it's available. That's a great feature for, the, for users, but can be problematic for testers. Let me show you this with an example. Imagine you have Chrome 98 in your computer. So you download Chrome driver 98.2 or whatever to drive the browser. And that works. Your tests are working in your, in your machine or in your build server or whatever. Then time goes by and Chrome is evergreen. So it upgrades the next version, Chrome 99. But you still have Chrome driver 98. But you, you were lucky at the time because it's still compatible. But eventually you will reach Chrome driver 100 in this case, and you still will have Chrome driver 98. And in that case, it's not compatible. You will face this popular error for Selenium tester, which is this day version of Chrome driver only supports Chrome version whatever, 98 in this case. I studied this problem in a, a paper some time ago, and I discovered that, well, I made this, 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 this chart, which is basically the Google Trends of that, that, uh, that string, that, that search, uh, of this version of Chrome driver only supports Chrome version. And I noticed that for given versions of Chrome, there is a peak of searching, people searching this, 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 this sentence, which makes sense because people that manage manually drivers eventually will face this error at some point, right? And that happened, and you can see these this peaks with uh, the Google trend of that label matching the, the, the release of uh, Chrome uh, browsers. So the solution for this is, in my opinion, make this in an automated fashion, right? We are automated tester, so why don't we automate this process? And that was something I did, I, I created a solution for that a long time ago with the tool WebDriver Manager which is a Java uh, helper tool for Selenium WebDriver, which provides automated driver management and other feature, well, other, that, the, the other feature is, is starting with WebDriver 5, but that's a different story. For, for today, WebDriver Manager is a tool for implementing uh, automated uh, driver management for Java, right? I created this tool in 2015, and well, I, had to, I want to explain why I created this, this tool, why I created Great Driver Manager. Well, first, because I thought that it was useful, that someone needed to do something like that, because that was a problematic uh, uh, issue for, for Selenium. But the actual motivation that moves me to, to, to release Selenium uh, Great Driver Manager 1.0 was because I was a first year uh, lecturer at the university. I was teaching web programming. And I wanted that my students learned JUnit and Selenium because Selenium was part of my career from my PhD dissertation. But I didn't want them to, fo uh, to, to focus on the configuration. I, I was pretty sure that many students were, were going to get lost at the very beginning. I, w I wanted them to focus in the test, clicking an element, open a web page, and the actual test, and not in the configuration, right? And for that, I had to say created WebDriver Manager 1.0. In a weekend, the first version was very, very simple, but it worked. It worked, at least for, for that time. And for this story, uh, well, what I did, it's also to answer a question in Stack Overflow recommending the use of WebDriver Manager, because I honestly thought that was a good solution for this problem. And the thing is that people start using that. That's the power of open source also the power of Stack Overflow, I had to say, that many people look for a solution and start using it. And I noticed because, well, people start uh, contributing to the project, uh, sending book, book, book reports and feature, feature requests and this kind of stuff. 
And of course, I continue maintaining this project uh, for, for, the, for, the, for these years. With time, uh, this, this web driver manager becomes quite popular. And a proof of that is that it appears another tools implementing the same approach, right? Today, we call it the managers for selling web driver. After web driver manager, it appears web driver manager, same name, almost the same name, for JavaScript. Also, web driver manager, again, the same name for Python this time. Or for example, web driver manager.net, for .net, of course. And in parallel, web drivers uh, implemented by Titus, which is one of the Selenium leaders, which is the same concept, automotive drivers management, this time for Ruby. So, this ecosystem of managers somehow solved the problem of the drivers, but to some extent, because web driver manager for JavaScript, for example, it was not very complete because you need to say which version of the driver you wanted, and that was not very convenient. So, well, the problem was partially solved, let's say. So, what did the Selenium project think about that, right? For many years, the Selenium project said that uh, Selenium was not a bat all batteries included uh, library, right? So, this problem about drivers, it's somehow, well, relied to third party like web driver managers. But on 2021, I think this started to change. At that time, the Selenium project uh, lead, um, lead the effort by um, David Barnes. They created a, a survey about uh, the needs of Selenium. And in 2021, they, they published the, the result of this survey in the, in the official Selenium uh, blog. And the results, among other conclusions, show very clearly that the respondents of that survey wanted that the driver management, the browser management as well, has had to be done uh, automatically by Selenium, right? They wanted batteries included, right? That's one of the, the most important uh, conclusion of that study. So, this story continues in 2022, in which we started to think in the official manager for Selenium. That is part of my story on 2022. I had the great privilege to join Source Labs as a staff software engineer, cooperating with the open source project offices. And thanks to that, I started to contribute to Selenium. I became a Selenium committer. And then in September, I start the implementation of Selenium Manager, which is the official manager for Selenium, uh, for the project Selenium. So, what's Selenium Manager? It's a tool which implements this concept, automatic browser manager and eventually um, driver and browser, uh, both of them. Uh, it, it started in September, and in November, we released the first beta of this Selenium Manager, right? We announced in the, in the, uh, in the Selenium blog. And since then, it's available for Selenium with driver and Selenium Grid. So what is Selenium Manager in detail? Selenium Manager, it's a CLI tool, right? It's a tool executive on the shell to provide a universal interface, right? It has been developed in Rust, right? It's a language, it's an interesting language, I recommend you. It's a difficult at the beginning, but it's, 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 it's interesting to develop in Rust. And it, we select Rust to allow cross-platform uh, cross execution. Currently, we build um, Selenium Manager for Windows, Linux, and MacOS. Then it's not a feature, but it's also in, it's something important. Selenium Manager has been created from scratch, but reusing the experience from previous manager. In particular, I have implemented the same, um, what they call resolution algorithm for drivers that I did in one driver manager, but now in the official Selenium Manager. So, I don't want to explain all the internal details of Selenium Manager, but I want to highlight several notes about the internal implementation. First, Selenium Manager implements what I call browser version discovery, because in order to get the proper driver version, you need first to discover the version you have in your computer. For that, it has a set of shell commands to find out which is the major version of your, of your Chrome, Firefox, or H, for example. With that, you are going 
for you. Selenium manager is going to discover the driver version you need. For that, you need to uh, ask the online repository and get the, the proper driver version you need. Then, of course, you need to download that driver, right? For that, you need an HTTP client, which centralizes all the configuration, like proxy and, and time, timeout, you need for this, this request. Sorry. Also very important, Selenium Manager use a cache, a local cache, because all the drivers that are downloaded can be reused, of course. That's uh, by, uh, obviously, we download once, but we reuse all the time the driver. By default, it's that in that folder in your machine, you will find the drivers automatically managed by Selenium Manager. And finally, it also maintains some metadata. That's, well, it's about performance as well, but in order to cache the driver version that has been resolved, right? During a, a, a time, TTL, which is one day by default, right? Again, this is a, a mechanism for improving the performance of Selenium Manager. So, let me show this in action, in the shell. I have here Selenium Manager, and I can execute Selenium Manager like that. That's a CLI tool. I said Selenium Manager Chrome Browser, and it basically returns a path, a path in the cache. This is the Chrome driver I would require to drive my Chrome, my local Chrome installed in my machine. I can see more details if I invoke like this, sorry, with the debug. With the debug flag, I see that Selenium Manager is running a command to find out the version of my browser. With the version of my browser, I discover uh, the driver version, and with that, this time, I point to the cache because it's already there. I showed, the, I showed this in order to see this, uh, for you to see how Selenium Manager works, but uh, users of Selenium are not intending to do like that, right? Instead of executing Selenium Manager directly from the shell, <coughs> the idea is that this is transparent for you. For example, for Selenium web driver users, as of version uh, 4.6, each of the release of Selenium web driver is shipped with Selenium Manager. That means that all the official uh, um, Binding language of Selenium has already batteries included. Literally, it has three batteries, which is the Selenium Manager Binary 4, Windows, Linux, and MacOS. And thanks to that, Selenium Manager becomes a batteries included uh, library, at least in terms of driver management. And Selenium Manager is used as fallback when the driver has not uh, found in the, in the shell, sorry, in the, in the computer. For example, Imagine you execute a test and you forgot to, uh, to uh, manage your driver. So let me see this in action, again with the same example before. Remember that this example has failed because the driver has not found in the path, no, no one has, has uh, managed. So let's do this. Let's bump to the latest version of Selenium and sync my project. And now, if I run my project again, it's building. What happened now is that it works, simply works. Under the hood, Selenium web driver has used Selenium manager to resolve the driver. And this is completely transparent for the user, as it should be, as it should be in my opinion, right? You focus on your test, and not in the configuration, right? not the driver thing. So, Selenium with driver is already using Selenium Manager. And also, Selenium Grid, right? The other important component of Selenium, uh, the Selenium project. Also, we can say now that has batteries included for driver management. So, Selenium Manager can be explicitly used, it's an opt-in feature, to use uh, in Selenium Grid. So let me show you this with a quick example. I have here again the Selenium server, uh, the latest version of, of this uh, Selenium server, this jar. And I can execute 
Selenium server in a standard allowed mode like that with the flag Selenium Manager 2. If I execute that, what is going to happen is that internally Selenium uh, grid is going to call Selenium Manager to resolve your drivers. Here you see the, in, the, in, the, in the logs, you can see that, well, I have add here drivers available through Selenium Manager 3. Edge driver, Gecko driver, and Chrome driver. So, this is again because Selenium Grid is using now Selenium Manager. So, well, who is using uh, who is using Manager? Who, in, in terms of people, right? Who is using? Uh, I don't know the, the, the numbers because, unfortunately, we we, don't, we cannot track. Uh, how much people is using Selenium managers nowadays. But I have some, some clues about that. I am the maintainer of WebDriver Manager, and so I have access to the statistics. And as I said, Selenium Manager was released in November 2022. Selenium uh, WebDriver Manager, at that month, I think this was the peak because it was downloaded like more than 2 million times. And it was used like 400,000 uh, unique IPs um, in November. I think that's the peak, the historical peak of Red Driver Manager, because after that, in uh, November and December, the number of IPs, the unique IPs, is dropped, right? Well, that's a bad, a bad sign for Red Driver, Man uh, for Red Driver Manager, but I think it's good for Selenium Manager because some people are moving to a solution like WebDriver Manager to use the official manager of Selenium Manager. But again, I want to, you to participate with this and I want to again to move to another question. Let me change the question in, the, in here. By the way, this is the result of the previous, the previous um, um, experiment. And now let's do another one. I want to ask you, are you using Selenium Manager? So please, if you want to participate, scan the code, because it's something that I am personally interested in. How many people, in, at least in this room, knows about Selenium Manager in the first place, and maybe you are already using it, or maybe not? So that's something that it's curious to me. So, well, since we have already this, this tool, let's say what you people think about, about this Selenium Manager. So we have already 37, 40, well, we can check the, res the results already. Wow, yeah, that's, that's very good. 30% says yes, and more or less half. No, I was, was not aware, but I will try. So thank you, that's very good news, and that's very good sign that Selenium Manager is actually a solution for a real problem. Okay, thank you very much for that. And let's continue with, well, because this talk is about browser and driver management, and you can think, what about browser management? This talk is almost finishing, and you have to not say a word about that. Well, unfortunately, this feature is not implemented yet. I had the my original aim is what to show something about browser management, Unfortunately, we, we focus on driver management to make this more stable and robust. And the idea is that after this conference, hopefully we will start implementing browser management for the community. So this would be a unique feature because we plan to download a browser for you, meaning Chrome, Firefox, X, when they are not available in your computer, they will be automatically downloaded for you and set up in an automated fashion. So that's, that's our intention and hopefully we will start this as soon as possible. So, to conclude, other possible futures of Selenium Manager. Well, we have several ideas in, in, in mind. Of course, this will be after the Browser Manager Management feature, but we have already started to discuss possible use cases of Selenium uh, Manager. Since it's a CLI tool, maybe we can reuse this tool for offering other features for Selenium developers. For example, maybe creating project scaffolding for different languages. Imagine Maven, uh, sorry, Maven uh, Gradle, 
or other languages that can be created automatically with Selenium Manager. That's an example. Not sure if we are going to implement. I th somehow I'm thinking aloud here. Only idea I have in mind, it, but this is a personal idea I have. I'm not saying that we are going to implement, but maybe we can integrate Selenium Manager with Docker Selenium. Maybe it make, makes sense that Selenium Manager has a Docker client and get the containers and start this container for, for the tests. Well, who knows? Maybe we can implement that. But also, I want to, uh, well, say that your feedback and ideas about what's the possible use cases of Selenium Manager could be, it's more than welcome. You have something that you can imagine that Selenium Manager can help you. Now it's a perfect time to, to share your idea with us. Okay, we are going to have here to have uh, to be here today and tomorrow, and we can talk, we can discuss what possible use cases you think about Selenium Manager. It could be amazing if you have some some idea you can share. If not here, maybe with uh, the Slack channel or maybe with emails, Twitter, whatever you can share your feedback with us, which is very, very valuable for us. And with this, I, I'm going to finish. And now if you want, there's some time for, for questions. So can you configure the Selenium Manager so that it can uh, pull from a certain repository, not from the source? Sorry, what? Again? Can you configure the Selenium Manager so that it does not uh, download the driver from uh, <coughs> the source, but like a certain repository, like an institute inside, like you put somewhere, yeah. not you download yet. from there? Not yet, but it's a feature that is planned, yeah. Yeah, we plan to make a, a configuration to set a different uh, repository. Instead of cron driver, maybe a mirror you do host on your own network. That's something we want to implement. It's, it's in the roadmap, but not yet. Thank you. I don't have a question, I just wanted to thank you for, for implementing it because uh, I wasn't aware of the Selenium Manager up until uh, a year ago and then some uh, guy told me about it and we implemented it in all of our projects in C Sharp and Java, so thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks to you. So same thing, like we were not aware about this one and uh, now I learned something new. Uh, my team usually finds the difficulties when uh, there is a Chrome driver update and we require to uh, basically uh, update. When, when, whenever there is a Chrome version updates, we need to also update the Chrome driver. Is it going to solve this issue? Yeah, theory, yes. You, 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 um, with this, each time you execute Selenium Manager, it's going to discover the proper version published by the vendor, by Chrome driver. Mm -hmm. So this will be transparent for you. You shouldn't have a problem. Of course, maybe it could be bugs, but we rely on the official, in the official version recommended by Chrome driver to be used to control a given version of Chrome. So in theory, this, this works. And my experience in Chrome driver, it works very nice because uh, I maintain with the manager for a long time. And the, the version recommended by Chrome driver is usually for not the city always works. So, so whenever there is a Chrome version will be updated, uh, yeah. the API call or maybe exactly the when, will just, uh, when Chrome uh, updates the next version, the next version of Chrome driver will be used as well. And it will be done through this uh, Selenium manager. Yep. Oh, okay. So just one question, if you have a project in which you already downloaded the driver files and you already created uh, the, you know, the code for opening the browser and you set the path, do you need to remove those if you're using a version that already has the Selenium driver embedded or can you just leave them there? You can use uh, the solution you want for driver management. You can do it manually, you can use something like WebDriver Manager and if you don't use that, 
then Selenium Manager will do for you, right? That's the, now the, the, the way in which Selenium Manager works, only as a fallback. You can manage on your own if you, if you prefer, for some reason. I don't recommend you to, to manually resolve the driver, but you can do it if you want. You can use another manager as well, but when a, when, if you don't do that, Selenium Manager from the, uh, from the uh, soft version uh, dot, uh, 4.6 will manage for you. So that's the procedure. Uh, so I'll share a couple of personal experiences as well as I have, do have a question. Um, for those of you who are curious, how well does it work? Uh, we have 50-something virtual machines. We're not using Docker. And it was a nightmare trying to keep our web drivers up to date, especially on a Windows machine, which has an automatic hourly executing scheduled task to check for updates. The second that we switched to uh, Selenium Manager, so many issues for us were resolved. So, highly recommend it. Um, uh, question I do have, though, is if it does, if the browser does update mid-run, the next time a test starts on that machine, Selenium Manager will do the update if necessary? Yes. We'll Fantastic. Do. Yeah, because each time Selenium Manager is executed, the, the, the browser version is discovered. So even if you have discovered the, uh, um, the browser version in the previous execution, and in the next execution, the browser is updated, it's going to be checked the new version. And if it's not in the, in the cache, which would happen the first time, it will not know for you. So yes. Hopefully a quick question over here. Um, so I noticed the browsers that you showed were Chrome and Firefox and Edge. Any word on Safari? Yes, yeah, Safari, yeah, that's an interesting question. Safari, it's also um, um, somehow Patient. contemplate. I don't know how, how bad you use because let me show you this Selenium Manager help, Selenium help. Don't forget this is a CLI tool. And here, this is the browser with browser, um, Selenium Manager supports, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Explorer as well, Safari or Safari Technology Preview. Well, it, Safari is a special case because Safari comes with Safari driver uh, out of the box. But it, again, we are, um, supporting in order to locate the driver for you, just in case you need for something. We need that uh, to make comp compatible the code, the legacy code of Selenium uh, web driver. So yes, Safari, even though it's a special case, it's, it's, uh, it's available, yeah. So for a .NET implementation, we're referencing our driver uh, through NuGet package. Is it updating the NuGet packages for you? Yeah, it's, uh, I know that I'm not in that, but yes, I, I think the, new pa the NuGet package inside uh, it has the three binaries of Selenium Manager. So you can you can browse in the in the release of, of the, uh, this, and you will discover that uh, it will be the Selenium Manager for Windows and the other two binaries, and it's there. It's time we release a. a a new release in Selenium, it, it could be shipped, it would be packed with the release, so yeah. We've got time for one last question here. So real quickly, uh, I'm wondering about how this works with uh, Docker, assuming my uh, containers get spun up and spun down, can I uh, use uh, like an S3 bucket as the uh, you said you were storing these in a, if you've already got it downloaded, it can, it can use it as a um, repo, I, not a repo, but uh, a place that, I, I, could I use it to go to an S3 bucket and go get the, uh, the latest version and bring it in? 
uh, on that, or is it would I want it to always go out to the internet and get the latest version <clears throat> on my uh, on my uh, uh, the containers, if that makes sense? Do you mean to discover the, the browser version within a browser con uh, Docker container, or, or the? Well, I'm thinking is when we're spinning up a new instance, we're always getting whatever was was installed on that instant on that image at the time. So it may update it, but the next time we bring up the image, unless we've updated our image, it's going to always going to have an old version, and then it's going to do an update. But I figured if I had an S3 bucket that's connected there, it could jump to the S3 bucket and pull it out rather than downloading it every time. It might be a little faster. I don't know if it really makes any any sense there. I think you can use a little for that because. Well, it's a CLI tool, and maybe when you pack your Docker uh, con container, you need the driver as well, right? So, um, maybe you can invoke Selenium Manager for a given browser, that's something you need to know, right? But maybe for a given uh, browser version, right? You can force the browser version you want. Maybe you are packaging Chrome uh, 100, so in that case, you force that. The Chrome driver you need is 100 because, well, that's what, what you are intending in that in the moment. So if you, root, you run, run like that, it's discover the proper version and it's, it's download for you. Of course, we, you, will, we, you will require the Linux, uh, the Linux uh, version of that, but with that, maybe you can uh, do some scripting to get that, that uh, binary in your Docker container. That's another idea. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think it, we, we finish. So thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.